Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madong, and this is the recap review for Pose. The second episode. Lord, I was so glad they did two episodes. I love this show so much. I'm so glad it's back. So anyway, the beginning of this episode starts out with us finding out why Judy and Pray Tell haven't been speaking to one another. And they show like what happened. Um, there was another ceremony. Well, not even a ceremony, another funeral that happened and nobody was really there. And she saw how drunk he was and how he was acting and came in late and all this other stuff. And he is just like being dismissive because y'all know he has a ball of emotions going on. So to make a long story short, she got up and was about to leave. And he was like, have you ever been in a relationship with that person that's in that casket? I used to date him. And you don't understand how I feel. Like, she just walked off and didn't have nothing else to say to him, really. So, they have not spoken since. Like, they got into it bad. I'm just like, Lord, this is, like, a little bit too much for me. So, Angel and Lulu are supposed to be linking up to go and uh, have a meeting. Everybody's supposed to come and meet up with Blanca because they are going to have an intervention with Pray Tell. And that was a part of the conversation as well when Judy was explaining to Blanca why she hasn't been talking to him because he is towed down. And it's like everybody knows, but pray tell, gonna do what he wanna do. So it's like, why are we gonna approach him when we know that he gonna be like, nah? But it's like, if you love him, you should be willing to do what you gotta do so you don't lose your friend. So they've decided to do this. They have brought in a counselor who is actually a part of the LBGT community as well. And they are trying to figure out how they're going to come at him. And so, you know, she's telling them they need to read, they need to write letters and all this other stuff, explaining to him why they are feeling the way they are feeling it and what they want to get across to him. And basically, um, she's supposed to, you know, Blanca was going to tell the counselor what she wanted to say to him, but it was supposed to be like, oh, she's playing like she's Pray Tell. And so basically she responded the way Pray Tell probably would have responded. And so they're trying to figure out how they're going to do this. And it's going to be hard because we all know how Pray Tell get down. Pray Tell is just, he ain't really trying to hear it. So we're going to see how that go. And everybody's just like, okay, it don't even matter. What we're going to do is, ultimately we know he needs help. We love him. We want him to get help. We want him to be clean. So... They want to put him in a sober living facility and uh, they've looked up some places and it's going to be like $2,000 or something like that. And they're trying to figure out how they're going to come up with the money. And Electric was like, look, we're going to have to do what we're supposed to do, which is we're going to hit the ground running with this ballroom stuff and all these categories that they have. And we got to sweep it. If we sweep every single category and do what we're supposed to do when we're practicing before all of that, we're going to sweep these categories and we will definitely have enough money in order to do that. So Electra is taking certain people and having them to do what they're supposed to do as far as practice is concerned. Ricky tired of his spirit. She looking at him like something missing. I don't know what you got going on, but something is missing from your routine. And it's so bad that she's working with Lulu too. Lulu cracked out and... Electra basically was like, um, you're thin. I've been noticing you're thin. You must be back on that stuff again. So you ain't can't you can't sit up here and try to play me. And she in her feelings because Electra told her you ain't gonna be in no category. Cause she was like, Well, mother, what which category am I walking in? And she was like, You're gonna be behind the scenes doing seamstress work, and that's it. And she in her feelings about it. And it's like, girl, why you in your feelings? Get off the drugs. And I mean, she, and I was so happy for her when she got clean first season because she was going all the way through then. And I understand. I understand that you must be going through a lot because a lot of people be trying y'all trans women. But I was just like, girl, uh, and Lulu is gorgeous. I was just like, girl, why? And she be looking toe down to the ground. And I mean, she and her feelings because she was supposed to be doing, I think she was going to do like, I guess, uh, Candy Sweet Reprise or something like that, um, where she would be lip syncing a Tony Braxton song. It might be that song, and I can't stop thinking about it. It might have been that song. Um, 
I don't know why I can't take this song. And I don't know why I can't think of the words right now as much as I live for her. But anyway, she bought a wig and everything, like a really, really, really short pixie cut type short, short wig and everything. I mean, <laughs> somebody was reading and they was like, you know, she probably spent her last two dollars on that wig. So let her do this. And Electra, Electra was like, no, nah, what we not finna do is that. Well, this heifer done went over to Poppy at An An uh, Angel's house and he came in. He was like, hey, babe, or whatever. What, expecting her to come out, try to see what's going on. They over here scrambling because they in here doing drugs and trying to do drugs or whatever. And so they come down the steps. He sees this heifer come with his woman. So he tied his spirit instantly. She could see the attitude on his face. So then Poppy done went off like, oh, it be killing me when I see Poppy go off on folk. I don't like that. But he had, I'm sorry, he had to go off on that heifer. So anyway, he told her that she needed to get out the house. And so he was talking to Angel and she and her feelings. And he, she really tried to sit up there and play him to myself. I'm not doing nothing. I'm not on no drugs, whatever. He was like, you do know I know you, right? And he straight up told her, I'm going to need for you to know I'm not going to never marry you if you on these drugs. And so, of course, her drugged out mind is like, oh, so you don't want to be with me no more. He was like, that ain't what I said. Like, what are you talking about? That is not what I said. What I said was, I'm not marrying somebody that's doing drugs. I don't want that for you, and I'm not finna do it. So, no, that's not what we finna do. So, anyway, I already told y'all about this heifer being drugged out, and um, Electra had to set it off. Well, now we are upon the night where uh, Blanca's man is introducing her to his family. Well, if you watch, I was about to say, I was about to say Snowfall. If you watch The Shy, the man who plays, uh, <laughs> I always call him by the name on there, uh, Perry. I don't know why I can't think his first name. But they call him, dang it, I can't think of what, they call him something. But anyway, that man who, who has the pizza shops on The Shy, he's playing this man's daddy. And, you know, whatever. So anyway... They're being introduced to Blanca and everything seems to be going well. So then they asked, how did they meet? <laughs> they showed how they met or whatever. And the way that they explained certain parts of it, they were showing the scenes where they was having sex, something terrible and enjoying themselves. And, you know, of course, his mom and them met. Uh, I think they were at Spelman Morehouse type situation. So in my mind, I'm like, are y'all from the South or did y'all go down South to go to school? Because Spelman and Morehouse is definitely in what, Georgia. And so I'm like, okay, uh, what is going on here? But yeah, that's how they met. And, you know, they're talking. It seems to be going well. Of course, Blanca was scared that they were going to clock her. And, you know, it just is what it is. So a situation happened where she felt like he should have defended her. But we'll get into that later on. So, anyway. Uh, Electra is at this ball. And they're getting ready to start trying to sweep these categories, right? And they get in the middle of talking. So, Blanca is venting to Angel and Electra about what went down. And she feels like he didn't stand up for her and all this other stuff. And Electra is trying to understand who is this heifer talking to her because the blocker that she knows did not care nothing about nobody knowing her teeth and would gladly say, I am a trans woman. If you got a problem with it, you could go ahead and go on about your business or whatever. So it's like she is just so scared of what these people going to think about her and all this other stuff. And she was like, what happened to that girl I used to know? So it just got to the point she was like, either he going to stand up for you or you need to be done, basically. So she was like, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to let him know how I feel. So, yeah. Well, Pray Tell is about to be on his way to the ball. And, um, y'all, despite him not being one of the MCs, you know, being the person who was actually uh, over and saying stuff, you know, the category is, you know, MCing everything. He is going to go. And they told, um, Electra told them, oh, we're going to put him to work. He's going to work. He gonna help work. So what he gonna do is he gonna help sweep these categories too. So that's what he gonna do. He about to be in one of these categories or a few of them. And so before he actually goes to this particular ball, he's he dropped by this man's house and um, 
old boy, he has uh, HIV or AIDS. And he usually just spends his days in the bed with her on away and in his feelings and all this other stuff. And he telling him, uh, what you finna do is get up out this bed and go to this ball. Do you know this ball is finna be everything? You need to get up and get, get out with me. Let's go. So he was like, okay. So he went in the bathroom, pray tell, looking at his medication that's all on the little, uh, not counter. I can't even think of the name. The uh, uh, dresser, the top of the dresser. Trying to figure out, you know, he's seeing all the stuff that's in there. So old boy come out. And, you know, because Praise Hell was like, you got a whole lot of medication that it seemed like you ain't taking. And he was like, you know, I'm saving them for a rainy day. So Pray Tell knew what that was. And so old boy explained to him that, you know, for me, if I want to go out, I'm going to go out in style. Because Pray Tell was like, oh, no, you're not. What you're not going to do is that. I'm not going to come up in here checking on you. And I find you dead in this house. He was like, oh, no, baby, if I do any of that, I'm going to take all this with me and I'm going to go to the Ritz Carlton or some fancy hotel he said he was going to go to. He was going to be up in there. He was going to order room service and that's where he would do it at. So I was like, oh, my. So then he took one pill or something and he gave Pray Tell one and told him that he can go methadone or something. He told him to go ahead and take it. So he took it and put it in his pocket. And in my mind, I'm like, Pray Tell, please don't. Don't say this for later and take it. So anyway, the sweeping starts to happen. <laughs> Pray tell went out there and set it off a little bit. <laughs> Y'all remember what happened first season? He had them heels on and he ended up having to have a newfound respect for the women that go out there and do what they do. And they have those heels on. So he had some heels on. He was dancing. And I love, like, I love every single song they had been playing so far. I'm like, Y'all better set it all the way off. So anyway, like everybody just said it all, but they did what they're supposed to do and they swept all the categories. So now they are all at the house and they, I mean, they eating and pray tell is uh, talking about, you know, I don't eat after nine o'clock. I, I got to have my wine. I got to have my, these are my antioxidants. So they all, I mean, everybody is there and they're talking. I'm like, Lord, you, you just got to show out at every turn, honey. Why? Like, pray tell is going all the way through it. Everybody's at the table. And it's so bad that it's like, if they had a scheduled date when they were going to do this intervention, it was so bad that Blanca was like, I ain't, we ain't got time for this no more. We got to do this now. Pray tell, we love you. We need to talk to you about something right now. So everybody knew what time it was. So she went and got letters that Poppy um, and Ricky had written in her letter as well. And... Poppy went first, and so, y'all, they went around the room, and they were talking to him. He didn't want to hear nobody, what nobody had to say, and he seemed like he was going to be on board at first before, you know, the letters and stuff started getting read, because he was like, they were like, oh, we were going to take you on a little getaway, a little vacation, or whatever, so he was like, oh, for me? What? It's not my birthday. What you mean? Well, he found out that it was for rehab, and so he seemed receptive at first. So when everybody started telling him that they love him and, you know, he's changed and whatever, even Blanca was like, you know, you're not the person that you used to be. I miss the friend that I used to have and all this other stuff. He got so triggered that he went off on everybody. Ricky, in his letter, said that if he don't get clean, he leaving him. I was like, oh, Lord. I mean, but it's been bad. Like, he's been setting it all the way off on Ricky. So I understand Y'all, so they didn't got home. I don't know how long after this had happened. But one day they had the house. Ricky had packed his bags for real. Ricky was tired for real in his spirit. All the way deep down in his soul. His bags were packed. And so he in a whole nother room drinking. He was like, I'm making a um, cocktail. You want some? He was like, no. Nah. And he slowly walking to the door. And he looking like, where you going? What you doing with them bags? And I'm like, pray tell. We just had this conversation, honey. Why are you trying to act like you don't know what it's hidden for? So anyway... He told him, I can't do this no more. I already told you, I'm going to leave. So then they have a moment and Pray Tell was like, please don't leave me. He broke down in some more and he seemed like he was going to really, you know, he might stay. But he was like, he had to keep his promise to himself and he left him. So Pray Tell was tired in his spirit and cussed him out and told him, well, get out of my house. Don't you come back. It went all the way off. I was like, Lord. So tell me why Poppy is having a conversation with Angel and, you know, he was like, 
he came home and she came home. She tried to figure out why he got everything decked out. Why all this food here? Like, are you cheating on me? I'm like, girl, you need to get off these drugs. So anyway, he straight up told her that we're celebrating and I just wanted to do something special for you. So he got her like a CK commercial. He got her, he got her some kind of perfume endorsement or whatever, where she going to shoot a commercial or something for um somebody. I forgot who it, Calvin Klein, I think. And um, so she was kind of shocked and I'm like, hell for you over here, you just smoked. You, 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 you over here doing crack. Girl, you need to stop. And so like, I'm just like, girl, please get your life together. Don't nobody have time for this foolishness in life. So yeah, y'all, it then got to the point where Blanca and old boy are talking and, you know, she came home and he's studying or whatever and she in her feelings still because, she felt like he didn't speak up for her. Well, he could tell that she was in her feelings. And so they were talking and she was like, you didn't stand up for me. And your folks don't know what my T is and all this other stuff. And I feel like you should have stood up for me. And so she got in her feelings and like, it looked like it was, it was about to be over with. And he straight up told her, you know, I'm with you. You know, I want you. I got your back. And yes, I should have said something when they said what they said to you. Because I think what happened was... His mama said, um, what do you think about having kids or something? And she said that she has kids already and all this other stuff. So they were looking like, er, wait a minute, what is going on? And they were trying to explain to her what the situation was. And she wasn't picking up what, he, what they was putting down. And it was just crazy. It was just the way she said, the way, the, the, the way his mama said certain things or whatever. So neither one of them picked up on what was going on. And so the mama kind of had an inkling and Blanca could pick up on it. So she already was kind of nervous. Like, all right, now this might end up ruining our relationship. Well, since this conversation has happened, they were all supposed to meet up for dinner again. They went, they went to some Italian restaurant or whatever. The daddy ain't there right now. And they're waiting on him to get there. Well, they talking and all of that. Well, they get down to the nitty gritty. And Blanca is just, like, not wasting no time. She ain't got time for it. She was just like, yep, I ain't even finna let her even try me. And so she basically went off and told her, don't try to come for me and all this other stuff because you know I'm a trans woman and all this. And so she was like, I had my suspicions, but I don't know about all this. And then the son started setting it off. And Blanca kind of felt like, you know, he wasn't going to have her back. She got up from the table, and he was chasing after her, and they stood right at the table and he straight up told her, if y'all cannot accept her, then y'all will lose me as your son. I love her. I'm going to be with her. It is what it is. I was like, somebody, please wait a minute. Wait a minute. Plenty of us can't even get a, a text back. And Blanca got this man setting it off for her. I was like, wait a minute. This man set it all the way off for Blanca. I was like, come on now. Y'all better set it off. So tell me why. Uh, uh, I forgot to tell y'all that um, we were at, they were doing something at the ball when that, when, um, when pray tell took old boy to the ball, he was not supposed to have anything to drink, no alcoholic beverages, but he ended up telling the bartender to give him something anyway. Well, you over here mixing stuff with medication. This man sat up here and had a whole uh, seizure, right? And so they ended up having to call the ambulance while he was there because they done did the most. And why ambulance just <laughs> come by as soon as I said that? But anyway, so they over here, oh my gosh, a whole situation went down. They ain't even want to let Pray Tell to even get up in there to go with them. They had a mask on trying to be, you know, whatever, you know, homophobic and some more, thinking they going to catch it just by being in the presence of them. Y'all, it was just a whole ignorant moment. I was so tired in my spirit when I saw that part. But anyway, so he had a seizure because he's sitting up here mixing the medication with the alcohol because he wasn't supposed to do that. And then, Pray Tell was in his feelings when that went down. And he ended up taking that pill out of his pocket and took it. And then he proceeded to drink. I was like, so what you trying to do? Repeat what just happened, sir? This is what you're doing? Oh, okay. And tell me why he's in this moment and he in his feelings. Old boy that used to be a part of the House of Evangelista who has his own house now. He rolled up on, on Pray Tell and basically like gave him a backhanded compliment and was like, okay, I see y'all worn or whatever. And 
And then he gonna read him somebody some yeah, you know, you over here watching your your whole uh your whole future unfold before your eyes because he over here trying to read him to my that's what's gonna happen to him. He gonna wither away and he gonna end up looking just like him sooner than later. I was like, and then pray tell got tied in his spirit. And he proceeded to get up and knock this man down to the ground. He punched him so hard. I was like, oh my. And then stepped over him and kept on going like it wasn't. And I was like, oh my, I know that's right, pray tell. Pray tell had to set it off. So anyway, like I was saying, so nobody has seen this man since he got released. And so pray tell was like, have y'all heard from him? Like he kept asking, he asked the MCs, he asked everybody else, have y'all seen him? Have y'all heard from him? They was like, the MC said, well, they went by the house. He didn't open the door. They had cleaned up. Um, I guess everybody got a key. So they had cleaned up the house. He wasn't there and all this other stuff. So don't nobody know what's going on. Pray tell was like, oh, no, nah, what are we not going to do with this? So, of course, all kinds of alarms went off in his mind because he thinking this man that went to that hotel and he killing himself. Because he was just like, if I go out, I'm going to go out the way that I want to go out. I definitely don't want to be in my apartment and do it like that. Well... He done went to the hotel and they brought him up to the room that he was in and they let him in there. So he laid up on the bed and he asking him where the medication at. And so he said, it's over there. He pointed over there to where the medicine was. The man got in his feelings and he was like, I was ready to do it. He had the food up there and everything, the room, so the room service that he ordered and all of that. And he started crying and he said he couldn't do it. He wants to live. I was like, come on now. This better be a moment where I pray tell know that this is what it is and that you need to start living and stop being a fool and being a drunk and start living your life too. So it fought, he fought everything within himself to kill himself because now he wants to live. So I'm like, I'm going to need for this to be a moment for pray tell to get his life. And he did. So they ended up, of course, you know, taking him, you know, where they need to take him. And it just, it's a moment. It was everything, y'all. I was like, okay. Y'all, so, Pray Tell popped up on Blanca. Blanca was at work or whatever you want to call it at the hospital. And so, she looked out the door. She saw him sitting out there and they came out there. Like I told y'all before, they hadn't been speaking like that because he's in his feelings because of the intervention. So, he basically let her know that, you know, he want to live and, you know, it is what it is. And he's sorry for the way that he treated everybody and talked to everybody. And so... He was talking about he want to do it. So she ended up driving him to the facility where he's going to get clean at. And they let him go. And when they showed her driving off, she started crying. And you could tell she was really happy that her friend is finally going to hopefully end up being the way that he is supposed to be. Um, quick side note, just in case y'all didn't know. The actor who is playing Damon... He is not going to be on this show. I don't know if he's going to ever come back. Uh, from what I can uh, ascertain, he is not going to be back. I don't know if y'all knew this or not. I think I did speak about this at one point in time when I did a thoughts post, like at the time when it happened. Um, his name in real life is Ryan Jamal Swain. He's the one, like I said, who plays Damon. He is not going to be on the show. Um, he was in that first episode. And in this episode, Blanca made it seem like he is now gone from the house and he is in his feelings and he is just tired of everything that's been going on. And so he left. So he was written out of the script. So what happened was um, he is from Alabama, right? He from up the road from me. He from Birmingham, Alabama. And, you know, that's not what this is about. But, you know, our connection, you know, is not what this is about. Um... What's crazy to me is the fact that his upbringing is exactly what happened when we first saw him step on the scene on this show. His stepfather in real life treated him like trash. He was emotionally abusive and physically abusive to him. And uh, what happened last summer was his, his sister was shot and killed. And that took a toll on him. Um, and... I don't know when or if he's going to return to theater and TV movies and all that other stuff. But if I'm not mistaken, they've written him out of this show. So continue to keep him in your prayers. I'm pretty sure that this is something very, very heavy that he has to heal from and cope with for the rest of his life. I could never imagine um, going through something like that. So yeah, y'all. Anyway, I hate that I had to end it like that because I, I forgot to mention it earlier. 
But anyway, hopefully y'all enjoyed this recap of Pose. Please like this video and let's get down in the comments and discuss it. Y'all have a good day. Bye.